AMD's B550 chipset has finally come out after about a year of delays nonstop. This is explicitly different from the B550A chipset. We'll talk about that in a moment. But the primary focus today is to distill the B550 chipset versus the X570 chipset and the differences between those two and everything dating back to the A320 chipset from the original Ryzen 1000 series launch. AMD's chipset line has gotten somewhat confusing in naming, especially since, and this is uh, a negative byproduct of a good thing, especially since AMD has supported its AM4 platform and some of its older chipsets through time as Ryzen has iterated. So today we're going to demystify that and break it down in a table that we've had verified as accurate to just give a numerical look at what the actual I.O. device differences are number by number between all the chipsets. Before that, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte Aorus RTX 2080 Ti Extreme. The RTX 2080 Ti Extreme is built with a triple axial cooling solution and ready for anyone interested in intermediate GPU overclocking, although it's also up for gaming out of the box. The Gigabyte 2080 Ti can reach the higher performance range required to play games at frame rates at and beyond 144 FPS, coupled particularly well with games like Call of Duty Warzone, Rainbow Six Siege, and other competitive FPSs. Gigabyte's Extreme is built to be a looker for system builders going for extra visual flair. Learn more at the link in the description below. There's more to it than just the I.O. device differences, of course. There's also differences for processor support and for future-looking support that we'll be talking about, too. But to cover the B550A aspect first, we previously reviewed a motherboard that has a B550A chipset. This was probably about January or so, somewhere around there. And it is not B550 as we're talking about today. So just to recap, B550A is basically explicitly for system integrators or SIs and OEMs, people who build computers and sell them to the mass market, not for DIY. This has not existed in the DIY market, at least not in any official capacity. B550A is simply B450, except rebranded. It only exists so that the SIs and the OEMs can sell their computers with a 500 series in the name of the motherboard when they list it on their websites. But we're talking about B550 today. It comes out June 16th. A lot of the motherboards will be out in the June to July timeframe. We should see almost all of the major ones on market by July of this year of 2020. And the biggest aspect outside of the chipset to consider in your board purchases is going to be the VRM quality for anyone working with higher core count CPUs or overclocking, and then obviously the quality of the BIOS. We're not covering those today. Those are massive topics on their own. But if you're curious, we do have a video on B450, X570, X470, all of the boards not including B550, where we talk about the best motherboards for AMD Ryzen CPUs. And we'll link that in the description below if you are curious about seeing that and getting some help on picking a motherboard. Obviously, up until B550, then we'll have to do another. So uh, future support. This is the number one thing to talk about. Other than the numerical differences in I.O. support and our table that we'll cover later, the future support for B550 is listed as supporting Zen 3. So Zen 3 will be operable on X570 and B550, but not X470, B450, or anything older than those. In terms of product IDs, these obviously have gotten a bit confusing, and we expect this video will reach a wider mainstream audience. So that means up to Ryzen 3000 will be supported on the 400 series and 300 series with some caveats, and that the uh, up to Ryzen 4000 at least will be supported on the 500 series. This additional future looking support will probably be the driving reason for upcoming board purchasers to consider 500 series boards rather than 400, especially considering a lot of the 400 series boards are otherwise completely capable. They're perfectly fine. There's extremely good B450 boards that won't really age in a negative way, and extremely good X470 boards that are completely viable if you don't want PCIe Gen 4. The difference is going forward where we might have recommended B450 in the past because it's perfectly fine if you don't want Gen 4, you'll now have to contend with the compatibility of Zen 3. And we don't fully know the naming, but it'll probably be called Ryzen 4000. That's not the same as Ryzen 4000 Mobile. That's a different architecture. So Zen 3 is probably going to be Ryzen 4000 desktop. One additional point of information to consider here is the APUs and where they come into this. So the 3200G, the 3400G, and the 3000G CPUs that AMD calls APUs have integrated graphics processors on them, or IGPs. These are not officially supported on X570, and they will not be officially supported on B550. So you should not buy a 500 series motherboard for your Zen Plus which would be a 3,000 numerical 
demarcation, APU, so it's got to have a G, a, an IGP in it. Those will not work on 500 series. Don't buy them together. Desktop 3000 series CPUs will work fine. Um, and it's just, it comes down to the architecture. Is it Zen Plus or is it Zen 2? So let's get into a block diagram. This is AMD's block diagram of the AMD B550 chipset. It's not particularly helpful, but it gives you a good wider picture of it. And then we'll look at the breakdown in a second. Remember that the CPU's capabilities are independent and unchanged by the chipset outside of BIOS lockdowns. So PCIe Gen 4 will run on the CPU directly to the primary PCIe by 16 slot and the primary M.2 device. That means B550 motherboards, unlike their predecessors, will officially support PCIe Gen 4 for up to two devices. Some early BIOS revisions on B450 motherboards also allowed this, but that was erased with later AGISA updates. AGISA is the AMD BIOS package that's provided to all of the motherboard manufacturers before they do their own work on it. It's also where you would get microcode updates, but that's what locked out the uh, Gen 4 support. So the chipset downlink remains PCIe Gen 3 by 4 because the chipset doesn't extend any PCIe Gen 4 lanes to other devices. So the extra downlink bandwidth found on X570 is unnecessary for B550. Time to talk about the chipset differences. We made a table for this and we've verified the information is accurate. We're going to hide parts of the table as we go to make it easier as we follow along and we'll just uncover them as we talk about each part. So we'll start with X570 and B550 revealed for those chipset differences. That's likely the biggest question that everyone has right now. Both chipsets support up to Zen 3 so far. And again, we don't know if they'll support beyond that, but it does seem unlikely. X570 uses a Gen 4 chipset link. B550 uses Gen 3. That's because X570, again, has PCIe Gen 4 lanes, which you can see marked in this chart, coming off of the chipset that are separate from the CPU's lanes for the GPU or the M.2 device and the primary slots. B550 has zero of these. These are referred to as general purpose lanes. They can be reconfigured into almost anything. Intel also has general purpose lanes on its chipsets. We can pull up a Z390 or Z490 block diagram and you can see what that looks like. But they use additional phrasing for something called HSIO lanes or high speed IO lanes. And they make a distinction between the connected devices, whether it's an HSIO device or not, depending on the bandwidth used. X570's Gen 4 lanes can be split into subgroups and We'll need to briefly cut to an AMD slide to show that. Here's the AMD X570 lane configuration in more detail than AMD's original block diagram. We are interested in those large blocks on the right side. There are four sets of by four lanes listed here. So that's the 16 number we saw in the previous table. And those can be broken into any of the configurations below them. For example, these could be broken apart into a single by eight PCIe Gen 4 slot, as illustrated by the orange bar on the left. And then the other eight could be comprised of PCIe Gen 4 device a, and four SATA ports. Or you could do eight SATA ports. Or if you're making some weird mining motherboard on X570, you could do eight PCIe by one slots if you want. You get the idea. It's pick and choose up to 16 more or less with only a few guidelines. Back to our table, we'll pick up on the Gen 3 line item here. B550 has 10 PCIe Gen 3 general purpose lanes with only two reconfigurable to SATA. We should clarify that the phrase reconfigurable here means that this is something the motherboard manufacturer can choose to do, not something that the user is able to do. Neither X570 nor B550 have Gen 2 general purpose lanes. We'll highlight that line. But both have four SATA 3, six gigabit per second ports natively supported, zero SATA Express, and they split USB 10 gigabit per second into eight on X570 and two on B550. USB 5 gigabit per second is two on B550 with USB 480 megabits per second as four on X570, six on B550. The total USB native device support is 12 devices on X570 and 10 on B550. We listed it with speeds since the USB IF totally screwed its naming convention. But if you prefer names, you'd have USB 2.0 at 480 megabits per second, USB 3.0, the original naming before it was renamed at least twice, would have been 4.8 gigabits per second, which we listed as five there. And then uh, USB 10 gigabits per second would be, uh, well, we, we think it's USB 3.7 square root 144 gen 0.5, but maybe they changed the name again. So modern AMD CPUs also have four USB 10 gigabits per second lanes. You'll always get at least that as long as the motherboard has put the ports on the board and they're connected to the CPU. That brings us to the next reminder, which is that 
limiting the chipset to this assortment of I.O. devices doesn't mean that's the only thing that can be on the motherboard with that chipset on it. So again, the CPU has some I.O. on it. It's got an I.O. die on Ryzen processors. There are two or three chiplets, depending on the processor you buy, that are active. One of those is an I.O. die, and that's got uh, some USB on it. You've got PCIe Gen 4 on it for the newer CPUs anyway. And that Gen 4 is what's enabled on B550, despite B550 itself, the chipset not having any Gen 4 lanes on it. In addition to this, motherboard manufacturers could buy more components if they wanted to, to add controllers to the board. So you used to see a lot of manufacturers buying a secondary SATA controller, often as media, and they'd throw that on the board. And then you get some maybe four more SATA ports out of it. Uh, sometimes you see a Quantia purchased for 10 gigabit ethernet. You might see PEX, PLX, multiplexing chips where you're bifurcating the lanes. So that's all uh, ancillary stuff. It's not provided within the chipset, but the chipset is not limited. Well, the chipset's not limiting the motherboard to expansion of IO devices. It's just that the motherboard makers have to buy additional controllers for it. And that's become a different thing. That's no longer AMD's responsibility at that point. And you're paying for it too as a buyer, obviously. Uh, separately too, the motherboard maker doesn't have to use all the I.O. devices that are afforded to it by the chipset. If they're making maybe a mini ITX or DTX board and they just don't have the physical space, they can cut some stuff out. All right, back to our table here. We'll add X470 and B450 now and just uncover those. B450 has been our go-to recommendation lately for anyone who isn't making use of PCIe Gen 4 and who doesn't need the higher-end VRMs associated with X570. B450 still got plenty of high-end VRMs on it. You can even get into some overclocking without going too extreme and you'll be fine. B450 and X470 are still perfectly capable and make sense for people who won't use Gen 4 devices, but that said again, moving forward, the expanded support of X570 and B550 to include Gen 3 will likely change our recommendation towards B550 rather than B450. B450 supports up to Zen 2. It uses a Gen 3 link. It hosts zero PCIe 4 and PCIe 3 general purpose lanes of its own. And instead it runs six PCIe generation 2 general purpose lanes compared to eight on the X470 chipset. SATA 3 availability is four ports natively for X470 to for B450 with the option to split other lanes off into SATA. Those would come from your Gen 2 general purpose lanes or from your SATA Express lanes, of which both last gen chipsets have two. Each SATA Express lane can become two SATA ports, or you can take both and turn them into a single four NVMe Gen 3 M.2 device. Support on these is equivalent for USB 10 gigabits per second. It's six and two for USB 4.8 gigabits per second, and it's six and six for USB 2.0 or 480 megabits per second. The primary difference between B450 and B550, highlighting those two columns, is the increased PCIe general purpose lanes that also benefit from becoming PCIe Gen 3 rather than PCIe Gen 2. Let's uncover the first gen rise and launch chipsets now on this chart. That should reveal X370, B350, and A320. X300 is covered in our launch coverage if you're curious about that implementation. All three of these stopped supporting Ryzen past the Zen Plus CPUs. X370, B450, and A320 support includes the confusingly named Ryzen 3000 CPUs that are APUs, so anything with an IGP in it. Uh, that include, again, 3200G as an example. PCIe Gen 2 general purpose lane assignment is 8 on X370, 6 on B350, 4 on A320. SATA 3 runs 4, 2, and 2, respectively. SATA Express is identical on all three. This is commonly split into M2 or SATA devices. The USB 10 gigabit per second port is 2, 2, and 1 from high end to low end. 4.8 gigabits per second is 6, 2, and 2. And 480 megabits per second is 6, 6, 6. Woe to you, O earth and sea. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast. Currently, I'm resisting the urge to rewrite number of the beast into a chipset song. So we're just going to move on. That recaps the chipset differences in a pretty clean fashion. There are a few other items to add. AMD's trying to position B550 as a cheaper, obviously, X570. So it's not, I guess the differentiation here is this isn't a full step down in classification. They don't want really B550 to be viewed as a lesser class than X570, unlike B450 versus X470, where there was a, a much clearer kind of split in the minds of the buyer of which one's better than the other. So B550 is supposed to start helping bring the pricing down while still affording the core feature set of X570, namely that you get Gen 4 PCIe official support, which is the keyword there, for the CPU device, but not on the chipset. That's that's the really the biggest part of the wrap up here. B450 boards didn't technically support dual GPU. 
uh, you'd probably never know because no one actually uses it, unfortunately. Not a knock on people who do, we miss it, but uh, not really that common anymore. V550 will support dual GPUs, for whatever that's worth. Uh, and based on AMD's slide deck to media, B550 chipset again will not support the 3000 APUs in an official capacity. So don't buy a B550 board planning to use it with a 3000G, 3200G, or a 3400G APU. And uh, we don't know what will happen with the, the next generation APUs. We're, we're not sure if those will be supported or not, but we'll see. Zen 3, again, not to be confused with Ryzen 3000, but we've gone over that enough at this point. So that should wrap us up. That's the differences. If you want the article version of just the plain text table. It'll be linked in the description below for easy reference for you in the future. And uh, obviously, we prefer people watch the videos because, well, frankly, that's what actually makes the money. The website doesn't really make anything. But if you want to support us and support the fact that we still maintain the website because, uh, well, I want to, then you can go to store.gamersnexus.net, pick up something like a mod mat, a shirt, a mouse pad, and we've got toolkits coming back in pretty in the next couple months. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus and support us there for behind the scenes videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.